Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to this new video. In this video, I'm going to try to do an art lesson of sorts. Uh, I'm not an art guru, I'm not a professional at art, but there's something, or there's some things that I can, I, I think I can teach you guys, not like perspective and some things like that. But today uh, we're going to look at something uh, that's called, uh, oof, I don't even know the name of this. Um, gradient? Man, I, I hope I'm not talking out about it out of my rear end and somebody can tell me in, in the chat gradients and or changes in value I don't know I'll show you what it is and then you tell me what it's called how about that uh, changes I'm sorry changes in value changes changes in values yeah values is the artistic is the, is the word is the art word that people give to different shades of black of darkness you know? so uh, like for example, you'll have a square, and you have another square, you have another square, and uh, for example, no, uh, this one square is completely black. Kind of, use your imagination, completely black. This one square here is completely white. And this is like an in-between type thing, uh, in-between type thing. And so. Uh, with inking, uh, you achieve different levels of different, I think it's called gradients, or different levels in the values uh, through cross-hatching. Through cross-hatching, essentially, with inking. Uh, so um, this is a solid black, this is solid white, and then in between, we have like a gray area. You know, we have this gray area. And so you achieve it, you, know, you, you have, you, know, you achieve this, this essence here, you know, from going from black to white. And so... Uh, if you can master this, I think it would help you out a lot with your art because you'll be able to, to like sh do things uh, with your pencil, with your inks that you normally could do with your pencils. Uh, for example, uh, I have uh, this area here and then this area is dark and it fades into the light. So normally with my pencil I do is I press hard on it like this or pretty hard on it like this. And then I soften up my grip, I release, and I elevate the, the pens ever so slightly. And then I can get a, a change in value from very dark now to light. And so I'm, and I'm going like this. Now, there's nothing that you can do with your pen where you can hold it to where you can like do this and then expect it to do the same. No, because this line here, this line that you have uh, here, is just as dark as this line that you have here. So it's, you can't really play with it like that. Uh, so what you have to do is do something different. It's possible to achieve this effect, but we have to do something a little bit different. And, and so um, if you think that I'm talking that on my rear end and you don't believe anything I say, I have some uh, some evidence. And here's a piece that I did of uh, Spider-Gwen. I did this uh, way back in 2020. And not, not the whole picture at all, but just this bottom part here. You can see, for example, how I do, um, how I, I achieve the, from this black all the way down to this white area. And so partic particularly here in this uh, bottom part of the building, you can see how I play with that, with those values, how I go from uh, heavy, heavy black to light. So I'm going to show you how to do this uh, today. Uh, I also do it in this picture here. This, uh, this is an uh, old turtles drawing. This is also from 2020. You see here there it is 2020 and I do the same thing but I do it uh, in, the, in these back buildings um, so there's the light that's down here and so it's like glowing supposedly and then, so this is going from dark and it's transforming into a light uh, so there's the that change there's the change here also from this building I think in that building it's a lot more evident and then the same here uh, so uh, it's, it's uh it's a bit time consuming a little bit you no know, you have to play with it but it is possible and it does give you a really cool effect if you know how to do it right and if you know also where to use it so uh so that's a really cool uh thing to have it's a really cool technique trick to, to use so how do you do it uh one thing that we have to understand with uh with this type of uh of, of gradient changing in values is that when you draw a line and if you want this line to respect the light source, you cannot have the line be the same consistency all the way out. So if it has to, there has to be a change in it. There has to be a, a play with line weights. 
So if this is your light source on, on uh, the left, if this is your light source on the left, and then this is the darkest area on the right, this means that the line that is closest to the light should be at its thinnest, at its thinnest, and the line that is closest to the to the pitch black darkness should be at its thickest. All right. So that means that if I'm using this line and I want to respect the light source and my light source is coming from uh, from the left, shining in that direction, then my line should look something like this. It should look something like that to where this is the thinnest part here, and then it, to the thickest part here. This is the reason why when you're rendering and when you're feathering, when you do this flick, or when I do this flick, I try to capture that same essence. I go from the darkness, which is the bottom, and always aiming towards the light source. Always aiming towards the light source. And so I do this, and then I flick. I do this, and then I flick. I do this. I don't really do it with this pen because it leaves like a blob there, but even that blob can help uh, can help sell the, the, the idea and the concept. So, uh, yeah, so I do a bunch of these lines. I like this, feathering lines. To where the thinnest area is pointed towards the light source and the darkest area is pointed uh, in the, into the darkest area of the, of the shadow. So you just have to have this idea, this concept in mind when you're trying to approach uh, something like this, because the essence is the same. You're going from this heavy black area to this almost white light area. So you have to respect the light source. So again, you're going from dark to light, dark to light, dark to light. Now, uh, you cannot do this just by lifting the pen, because you, know, you can't do this just by lifting not not only by lifting because in uh, you can't not not just always like that it helps to, to set to, to get it started but um you can't just depend on that line you have to play with it a little bit so uh, for example let's imagine that i want to uh i'm going to i'm going to test it out here and let's let's imagine that i'm going to do the same uh this same trick here i'm going to do it right down in the shadow area so the first thing that I do is I lay I lay down a, a base layer. And so I lay a base layer. I'm gonna try to do it with this pen, but normally the way I do it is I get a, this for example, this is an 08, which is very thick. Normally you can use like an 01, 0.1, um, or if you wanna do, like for example, in, the, in this one for the turtles, in this turtle piece here, the lines are very fine very very fine so i think you can i even use like an 0.005 for those just for the base layer no you can use a 01 you can probably use an 0.3 no play around with it play around with it see what's more comfortable for you but i want to try to do it with a with an with an 08 um so what i do is um i lay my base layer down so the idea is that i'm trying to uh and i'm just trying to go Trying to make, trying to just lay something, something flat, no. And don't worry about the imperfections there. Don't worry about it. It actually helps. And so, draw your lines like that. If it's much more effective if you can do it parallel lines and if they don't cross each other just yet. If you can just do it like that, excellent. Um, but Elliot, I don't have experience with that. No problem. But you can get another piece of paper and then you can just practice with that and you know get into a motion where you're comfortable. When you're comfortable with that motion then you approach it no so once i lay my base layer down i lay my second layer all right so <laughs> the second layer uh, is not going to go this entire way no no this is the the base layer goes here but the second layer is not going to go that length no? so the first layer that I laid down went from here to here the second layer is not going to go that far out maybe i can do it from here to here how far out you decide you decide because it depends on how much you want to how much you want that fade to, to be you no know? um, so here's your second and then here's your base all right so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to try to do the same line again on the same same place and just try to keep it to about to about that length now 
there's two ways to approach this and let's see how I approached it here uh, yeah there's two ways to approach that because you can uh, let's imagine that this is the base layer I could do the base layer and then the second layer I could do the exact same line over that line I could do it like that or I can cross hatch it Uh, for the effects of this video, I'm going to crosshatch. All right, so you can do it parallel line on top of parallel line, or you can crosshatch the parallel line, but it has to be that distance. So I'm going to crosshatch. Now I'm going to move the paper so it's comfortable for me. Um, so I'm going to crosshatch and I'm going to start uh, here because the pattern has to be consistent. Consistency is key. If you can't uh, do it, then it's always good to practice beforehand. Yeah. All right, so there's my second layer. And then my second layer goes to about here. And then I'm going to repeat this process with my third layer, my fourth layer, and my Peter layered. <laughs> Peter layered, creator of the turtles. It was a little dad joke. But anyway, so and that's the concept. And so in this case, the third line goes not the same. Try to keep that equal, equal increments. No? So then the fourth one should go here. Now, uh, again, we have to cross hatch this again. Um, in this case, I want to cross hatch in the other direction. So if I, I did the first line, in one direction, I did the second line in that direction. Then the third one is going to go in this direction, like an X. And I'm going to do that to like about here. So let's just, uh, I'll start, oh, I'm sorry, let me finish this up here. Yep. So I'll start that here. Just make sure I have my mark about there. Yeah, all right, let's go. All right, and then there's the third layer. And then I have to do the fourth layer. So if I did one that's going left to right, I did one, I'm sorry, let's do, if I did some that's going in this direction, and then I crossed it in this direction, then the next line has to go up and down. All right, so that's gonna be my fourth layer and I'm gonna do up and down up to like about here. And so I'm going to start here, up and down, up and down. And it's like about here almost. Yeah. Here you can play with it a little bit also and just lift off and just do something like that. And then like that. That's my fourth layer. All right. And then if you want to make it more, you can do a fifth, a sixth, a seventh, an eighth. Just continue repeating th these patterns. Uh, you know, it's one way. Then you cross it, then up and down, then side to side, then a little bit at a, at, a, at a greater angle, then at a greater angle, then at a greater angle, and like that. You can just keep playing with it. So I'm going to continue doing that. Maybe two more coats, two more, two more layers. And let's see, I did that. Yeah, let's try this one. Let me try to do this one. And to help sell the effect towards this area should be in heavy black. So that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, I guess I was able to do it with an 08. Uh, you can make this effect greater if you use smaller smaller uh, tech pens. If you use smaller tech pens, you can make it blend a little bit better, uh, which is what I did here. Let's so see here I blended. I I use a variation. Like I would start I would start my base layer with like an 05. Then I would go to the next one, which is an O, O one, and then I would you know l play with it a lot. Then I would go with an O three, you know, and and then work my way like that, and then get something a little bit more refined. Uh, and the same thing here. This is even smaller than that. No, um, let me see. Just like give you a little demonstration, so you guys don't think that I'm a bunch of. That I'm just.
fucking nonsense. Uh, let me see if I can pull out the smaller ones. Vision number three. Vision number three, vision number five. And if I can get an old one. Uh, where's the old one? <laughs> Yeah, I got it. Here we go. Here we go. All right. So I'm going to do the same thing, but um, I'm going to use uh, what I used in that in that piece. And so I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to start here. Obviously, I'm going to do a smaller space because these are smaller. Now I'm looking at an 003, which is the smallest that I can find. Then there's an 005, which is uh, another one after that, and then the one after that is an 01. So let's take a look at how this works. I do my base layer with an 003. So check this out. Well, let me test it first. Now you see how fine that line is? That's crazy. <laughs> I went back over it again because I have that control where I can with it a little bit and not affect too much the gradient now here's the 05 which would be my second second coat um, i'm gonna cross hatch it i think uh, for example and when i did this i did the line in one direction and i crossed it like dramatically like that you know and i crossed it dramatically like that but if i do a line like this and i just tilt it ever so slightly I can give off uh, a nice uh, pattern effect to it. Um, so I did it here, and I do it like about here. I go back over it again just to make sure I have these I have a consistent pattern across. Okay. Uh, then I can cross hatch this, I guess if I like. Cross hatch that. Was the 05 again? Cross hatch that. And then I go with the 01, a little bit bigger. And then um, I'm gonna cross hatch. I'm, like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna cross hatch again. Same pattern, but just not so much. Um, I'm gonna put about here. Cross hatch it again. And then I can even go back in that same pattern again one more time if I like. And then there you go. See that? When it's when it's, when it's with a smaller uh, tech pen, you can make it even more like almost like a blended type thing. It looks almost like that, not just almost almost like that. But again, you can continue playing with it, and then you can get something. This is a little bit more. You'd have to like hold this far back get a better appreciation of that but that's the concept that's the idea and just execute that and then yeah go back over it again in the same place again uh, just to give you uh, exactly what you like and you can blend it out a little bit more there's different ways to play with it you know, so so yeah so that's that's what I'm going to show you today that's what I showed you today hopefully uh, you liked the video if you did hit that like button subscribe to the channel if I think of some other thing that I could show you then I would definitely uh, do that in the um, in the, in the channel um, and, uh, and yeah so today was gradients changes in values I hope that's the correct word if it's not correct me in the in the comments but the concept is there you, know, you understand the concept I explained it step by step and I think uh, it would make for a nice video and I hope you liked it if you did hit that like button uh, subscribe to the channel tell your friends about me tell your mom about me tell your dad about me and, uh, and yeah I hope you uh, uh, and I hope you subscribe. I'm really close to 500. I would like to hit that. 
Uh, I think I'm gonna start doing giveaways. Uh, I think I might do a giveaway with sketch cards. Uh, I'm not sure yet. Uh, maybe you can mention the character. I can draw that character and then do a sketch card giveaway of that. I don't know. I'll think of something. Uh, nothing is official yet. I'll make official announcement and then post it in the community tab. Please take a look at the community tab. I got a lot of cool art there. And uh, take a look at my backlog of videos. Take a look at some of my live streams. I do draw streams also from time to time. And I do uh, critiques of my art. And I also show off uh, new pieces of my art. I don't have anything uh, at the moment. I'm gonna work on something. I'm finishing wrapping up a commission. So uh, I have to do that. And, uh, and yeah, so that's it. My name is Elliot Rodriguez. I hope you liked the video. If you did, remember, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. And that's it. Have a great one. Have a great day. Take care. Peace. Hello, everyone. The time is finally upon us. Ominous Avenging Death is now available. Avenging Death is a short 10-page story that serves as a preview of what kind of art you can expect and the world you'll see in the main story of Ominous. In Avenging Death, we'll see Zadok take on the monstrous Deathmonger in a 10-page fight scene that'll be sure to get you hooked into the world of Ominous. All of the artwork is done, including the line art, which was done by me, the colors, which were done by Emmanuel Orlas, and the lettering, which was done by Paul Bird. So grab your copy of the digital PDF file today for only $5. That's right, 5 bucks. Contact me and my DMs on Twitter for more information. Now coming up next is the official trailer of Ominous Avenging Death. Enjoy.